But it's going to be a great game to watch Jamerson play. And Tom, stopping Jamerson is always difficult. They did hold him last time. Is it possible again here on the home court? Well, I think they're really pointing to it, Al, on the board in Dick Hunsaker's office today. They've got Ball State, the Mid-American Conference Championship versus Jamerson, the Mid-American Conference scoring record holder. And that's where they're aiming. They've got to stop him by double teaming and switching and keeping the ball out of his hands. And if they do that, I think they've got a great opportunity to win the MAC here tonight. Mid-American Conference action. Cardinals and Bobcats next on WIPB. WIPB Sports presents Ball State University Basketball. Tonight, live from the Convocation Center in Athens, Ohio, the Cardinals face the Bobcats of Ohio University. This WIPB basketball telecast is made possible in part by grants from Paul R. Craw Plumbing, Incorporated, Beachler's Fine Furniture, the Muncie Newspapers, Incorporated, the Muncie Star, and the Muncie Evening Press, Ross Supermarkets, Indiana Michigan Power Company, Remax Realty Plus, Defer, Varan, Hanley, Radcliffe, and Reed Attorneys. Pizza King. Selby Martin Insurance Incorporated. Doctors Ashman, Olinger, Wilson, and Roth. Merchants National Bank. And Wendy's Restaurants of Muncie. Hi, everybody. Al Rent, Tom Dobbs, and Owen Lormier. We are courtside, and we are over in Athens, Ohio. A nice drive over. Gentlemen, nice to have you with us tonight. It was uh, very pleasant uh, and short, four hours, uh, Tom and Orrin. The, the trip was a little shorter than we thought. Well, I like that, I, I was planning on five hours, but only four, and kind of took my time and really didn't speed in. And we did not have to see any speeds, and we didn't have to see any red lights behind us either. Well, the Cardinals are out there warming up, as are the Bobcats. And before we get started with the game, Ohio, this is the last home game for the Bobcats, and they'll be recognizing their seniors tonight. And uh, one in particular is Dave Jamerson who uh, leads all conference scoring, is second in the nation with a 31-plus average. In fact, Tom, he's the only one in double figures for Ohio. Well, that's true, Alan. I think one of the things that happened when, when they played uh, Ball State at Ball State was a couple of kids really came out of their shells and played very well because Ball State did such an excellent job on Jamerson, if you remember right, just scoring 17 points. And a couple of the other kids really came in their own, particularly the kid that doesn't even start. This Hopner kid came in, got 13 points. And of course, Whitaker started playing very well at that time. So what happens when you really isolate and, and double up on a kid like Jamerson? Some of the other kids really come to the front. Oren, uh, comparatively speaking, uh, are the Cardinals and Bobcats very close? It was a 16-point Cardinal victory over in Muncie. Well, in some areas, Al, they are very close, but there are about two or three main areas where there's really a big difference in Ball State's favor. One of them being rebounds for Ball State out, rebounds Ohio an average of four per game. But on the rebound margin, which is a very important margin, Ball State's eight-plus, whereas Ohio University is about even. And then on the scoring also, Ball State's averaging 72 points a game, Actually, 14 points more than their opponents, whereas actually Ohio University is not scoring quite as much as their opponents. So those are three areas that we really are far, far ahead of Ohio University. Let's hope it's that way tonight. Well, the Cardinals, um, if they uh, win the Mid-American Conference action, and, you know, it could be won tonight, should Kent lose tonight. Uh, that remains to be seen if that is a possibility. But should the Cardinals win it, it will be their fourth league title, Tom, this decade. That's kind of hard to believe if someone thinks back. There have been two outright championships, 82 and 89, but they shared it two other times. And the first back-to-back -back in 27 years, Al, that's a key element, I think. They have a chance tonight to really get the number one seed by winning. Regardless of what Kent does, they would get the number one seed in the tournament. A victory tonight would give Ball State back-to-back 20-win -back seasons, and that is the first time ever in the 69-year history of basketball at Ball State. It would be the Cardinals' fourth 20-win campaign all during an 11-year span. Well, let's uh, recognize some of the seniors who are being mentioned and who are being introduced. Of course, the biggest hand will be for Dave Jamerson as uh, he is introduced. They only, Tom, they only have nine men dressed for play. That's Jerry Lebo now. Uh, play center for them, a senior. Lebo, the senior... We did not get the other two gentlemen who were introduced. We'll tell you uh, the senior players in just a moment. Oh, 
And here comes Dave Jamerson. No, I take that back. Dennis Whitaker. That is Whitaker. That is yeah. Dennis Whitaker. Whitaker. Ohio of the year. He is uh, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's a guard, 5'11". He's their all-time leading assist leader in uh, Ohio University. And quite a ball player. And uh, Ohio University's all-time men's basketball scoring leader and currently second in the nation in scoring points per game, Dave Jamerson and his parents, Charlene Bose from Monroe Falls, Ohio, and John Jamerson from Cuyahoga Falls. That is floor announcer Raleigh Swart, who just introduced Jamerson, and the Ohio seniors. And once again, Dennis Whitaker at 5'11 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Reggie Rankin, he's 6'2 from Columbus, Ohio. Dave Jamerson, of course, he's 6'5. He plays forward. And Liebold, 6'5 from Perrysburg, Ohio. Those are the seniors. And Jamerson is going to be a big loss. Let's go to Raleigh Swartz for our starting lineups. Center, home of the Ohio University Bobcats. Tonight, the Bobcats play host to the Ball State Cardinals. Introducing now the starting lineup for tonight's game for Ball State. Number four, a 6'3 sophomore from Muncie, Indiana, Chandler Thompson. For the Bobcats, number 10, a 5'11 senior from Philadelphia, Dennis Whittaker. For Ball State, number 20, a 6'1 senior from Detroit, Michigan, Scott Nichols. For the Bobcats, number 20, a 6'5 freshman from Columbus, Ohio, Chad Gill. For the Cardinals, number 30, a 6'3 senior from Muncie, Indiana, Billy Butts. For the Bobcats, number 23, a 6-foot sophomore from Dayton, Ohio, Nate Craig. For Ball State, number 42, a 6'7 senior from Detroit, Michigan, Paris McCurdy. For the Bobcats, number 41, a 6'5 senior from Perrysburg, Jerry Lebo. For Ball State, number 44, a 6'9 senior from Detroit, Curtis Kidd. And for the Bobcats, number 33, a 6'5 senior from Stowe, Ohio, Dave Jamerson. Well, there are the starting lineups and uh, a bit of a change. Scotty Nichols will start in place of Emmanuel Cross. And uh, we would uh, tell you who the officials are tonight, but there they are on the screen. Sam Licklider from Kettering, Ohio. Roger Paramore, Centerville, Ohio. And Larry Shoemaker. Schumacher, uh, I guess it is. Smackle. We'll get it straight. Also from Ohio. Does it surprise you, Tom, that Gills is starting in place of Whitaker? Well, not really. Uh, again, Gills has been playing very well. He's a 6'5 freshman, and I think they want to give him a little chance tonight. I think the big thing right now is for Ball State not to let uh, Ohio U get off to an emotional start now. This is the last game for the seniors here, particularly Jamerson, and letting them uh, get off on that emotional high and get out of the blocks real early could hurt Ball State. They need to really take control like they did the Western Michigan game right from the start. Cardinal women won earlier tonight. Tip controlled by Ohio. As Cardinals got the tip, but it went over to number 10. And that is, now you know what, Dennis Whitaker is into the ball game. Outside, no good. Ball picked up by, let's see who's got it, Ohio. Kick back to Whitaker. Whitaker will pass inside and throws it away. Yeah, one pass too many. He really had the shot and should have taken that one. Now, I've got to say that Whitaker was not introduced, Tom, as a starter, and yet he's in there. Well, somewhere he must have been on the roster, on the book. <laughs> Scotty Nichols, a surprise start. We expected to see a different guard tandem, but shot is up and no good. Missed by Paris McCurdy. It's still just underway. No score. Ohio with a shot. Cardinals with a shot. Nobody has scored. Oh, you. Oh, you. 
Rebound to Curtis Kidd as he swept the boards. And Orrin, you alluded to it in the just the initial pregame. If Curtis has a good game, Cardinals could be in for it. Shot up, no good. Chandler Thompson had the try, couldn't pull it down. They need Curtis Kidd to do the job he's done in the last two games, and especially against Western Michigan. Well, I think it's more than Curtis, though. I think the, the whole team, Curtis picks up the whole team. Jamerson with a three, no good, rebounded by Butts. Out to Kidd. Uh, Kidd is not the fast break man, but he'll dribble down. He'll take it back outside, and that's a wise move. Our seats are directly in front of what they call the sixth man. And that is a group of young men and women from Ohio. Chandler Thompson throws it inside. Kidd's got it. It's back to Ohio. A lot of loose ball on the floor and really kind of sloppily played right now by both teams. We're right in front of the student section. So if you hear a lot of yelling and screaming, it's, it's from them. And it's for real. And it's for real. <laughs> Beautiful facility here. About a 13,000 seat convocation center with a big green... Bobcat Paul on the floor. Steal, almost, Nichols, who's got it? Knocked out of bounds. Give it back to the Cardinals. Said it went off Whitaker. And Scotty Nichols in a good try, almost had the steal, but the Cards get the turnover, and somebody's going to score. You know, off uh, this guard tantrum right now, Al, with Nichols and Butts, I think the coaches have realized that uh, Butts and Cross are the number two guard, and they've got to play them opposite one another. Kid got the roll, and the Cardinals get the first two on the board. 17-46 in the first half. It's 2-0, Ball State. So I think you're going to see Spicer and Nichols playing the one-point guard, and you're going to either have Butts or Cross in the game. Throwing back outside. Whitaker, he'll try the three. It's no good. Rebound, jump it up, and Bobcats come down with it. Stolen First by trip. Chandler. Nice trip by Chandler. Chandler wants to take it all away, but he'll pull it up. That's a good move on Chandler's part. He's trying to create too much. Paris McCurdy, no, but a foul, and that'll go against the Bobcats, and McCurdy will go to the free throw line. He'll have two. Again, Ball State got ahead of themselves a little bit there, Al. He really only had two people down the floor, and they had three trailers. Really was a little bit too quick of a shot that time. One of Chandler's problems on the road has been trying to create some things when it's not there. And it's good to see him pull that ball back out that time. McCurdy gets the roll. I said a moment ago the Lady Cardinals won by four, 64 to 60, and they were down uh, Orrin by as many as 13. That's oh, right in half. the first half, and they came back and really played a great second half to, to come out ahead. And off the front of the rim, Chandler Thompson skies. Thompson comes over and takes it. Back outside to Butts with the three. Bingo! Cardinals up by five. Take it back, it's up by six. Six to nothing, Ball State is out quickly. 17 minutes remain, first half. Well, this is what they needed out to come out of the blocks real quickly and stop that emotional possibility with OU and their seniors. Cardinals will try a lot of defenses on David Jamerson, but they've got a chaser on him trying to keep, as Coach Hunsaker said, deny him the pass or the dribble. Jamerson with the shot. No good. Rebound to Billy Butts. That may be as open a shot he's going to get all night long. Last time out against Kent State, Jamerson had 52 points. Chandler Thompson on the outside. Another three. And Cardinals up nine to nothing. Well, when Ball State uh, shoots 50% or more, out, they're undefeated this year. And that's good to see. The last two games, they've shot 54 and 51%. They're shooting very well right now. Cardinals look loose, Tom. They beat Ohio 77-61 at Muncie. Jamerson only got 17. In most cases, giving 17 to a player is letting down defensively. Against Jamerson, it was a yeoman's task. First basket hit, 41. That is Liebold. Liebold got it, and it's 9-2. to two. Well, he's not going to bury too many of those. He's a football player, actually plays on the OU football team, but he usually penetrates and just a muscle man inside. Cardinals looking inside. Curtis Kidd, he'll drive, he'll shoot off the glass, doesn't get it. Chandler Thompson, no good. Rebound and up and good. Good job by Chandler. Curtis that time really kind of forced the issue there. He really didn't have a good shot, shot it off balance. Thompson playing dynamically right now inside the paint, Tom. Well, he's playing under control, Al. That's the big thing. He's really going up under control. Craig looks inside. He'll take the shot. He doesn't get it. Rebound, knocked out. Who's going to get it? Craig gets it back. Back well, to Whitaker. OU's getting a lot of offensive boards right now. Cardinals have the, and there goes Whitaker on the drive, and he has foul on the way in. Chandler Thompson gets it. Well, Whitaker just showed you his great lateral quickness that he had. He just kind of left Chandler in the dust there. Cardinals seem to have the offensive board scouted well, but the ball is bouncing in a little different area. Whitaker 
Just takes a momentary rest. It may think it's a contact lens. It was a contact lens, Al. <laughs> and leave it to or, our resident physician to know that. Yes. So Dennis Whitaker will go over and uh, check to see that he can see. So far, Al Jamerson has taken three shots and missed all three. And like Tom said, the last shot that he had was really his first really open shot. Here's a, here's a replay on that foul. We can see what happened here. He just really gives him a little uh, jump oh. move to the right and just went flying by Chandler. And Chandler reached in and got the foul. What a nice. great nice. stutter. Nice fake. Oh. He's quick. He's a penetrator. They've got to stop him from penetrating because he can do that and dish off, and you can really get hurt. Let's go, Earlier this year, Ohio lost some players to a variety of problems. Whitaker with the shot. It doesn't go. Foul, and he'll go for shooting two. I don't know who was guarding him that time, but he left him again in the dust somewhere. A pile of dust down on that floor right now. Again, the quick feet of Mr. Whitaker. Foul on Billy Betts. Whitaker on the year, shooting 62% from the free throw line. Oh, you're not a particularly good free throw shooting team, as we've seen with Kent. On the year, the team is shooting 66%. Cardinals are better than that at 71. For a second one is good. It's 11-3 with 15-13 remaining first half here at the Convocation Center in Athens, Ohio. I've never been to this game. Oh, Billy Butts lost it out of bounds. Just took his eyes off of it and lost concentration. Quickly unforced there. Butts tried to move before the ball was there. Cardinals turn it over. A beautiful campus nestled in the... Uh, Southern Mountains of Ohio is just gorgeous down here. Whitaker, we've got a foul underneath. What's it on? It uh, looks like it's on Ohio. Yeah, I think uh, probably on number 41, Lebold. He was trying to set a good pick and screen for Jamerson, try to cut the back door. So Lebold gets the foul. Their scoreboards here do not uh, allow us to see the team fouls as they accumulate. So we'll ask for Dr. Olinger to help us out. Scotty Nichols, a surprise starter. Seems to have a lot of mo mobility back. There's Butts. He'll pop again. He doesn't get it. Rebound to the Cardinals. Curtis Kidd back out to Butts. Cardinals nice. will get a fresh 45. Nice dump out. And Butts yeah. throws it away again. And Whitaker, uncontested, got the two. Just two unforced stairs there, and they finally converted on that one. <clears throat> Not sure what Butts was doing, but he just threw it away very easily. Trying to make a pass just didn't happen. Butts with a three on the outside. So Billy is slowly coming back, would you say, Orange? Oh, yes. He's picked up quite a bit the last two games. He needs to continue to concentrate, though, and handle that ball and uh, not throw it away like that. Chandler Thompson wanted to make the move inside. Couldn't get it. Scotty Nichols will trigger. Curtis Kidd, he'll put it up and got it. That's There's that shot. little flip shot that he started doing it again last week and it just looks great to see that again. But he's got to get open. He's been forcing the ball too much all year long and what he's doing now is taking the good controlled shot. He's getting himself open. 13 to 5 Cardinals lead. 13 and a half to go in the first half. That's Jamerson. And they got him out on the floor. If you push him out that far on the floor it's going to hurt his offense. Jamerson averaging 31 a game. Craig with a drive. Nice what a move. shot. Pretty shot. And Nate they Craig got, got it. they got some good quickness with uh, Whitaker and Craig in there at the guard. They're really tough. Craig is a sophomore from Dayton, Ohio at six feet. A foul inside. It's on the Cardinals. Well, I think uh, Lee Bode and uh, Paris McCurdy were going at it. I think Paris got caught. Oh, cards turn it over. And Paris McCurdy will go out, as will Billy Butts, Emmanuel Cross, and Sean Parrish will come in for the Cardinals. Well, again, Cardinals go 10 and 11 deep. Again, what you're going to see, I think, is Butts and Cross doing more substituting for one another as a number two guard, and Nichols and Spicer doing more of the number one point control guard. Larry, you say she was talking about that before the game with me. They think they've, that, that's a better situation for the team. Well, Jamerson is fouled by Sean Parrish, who uh, just broke into the game. Hasn't had a time to work up a sweat, but he's already got his first personal. You know, it's amazing when you look at Jamerson's stats. He also leads the team in rebounds, and he averages 36 minutes a game. Jamerson is the original Iron Man for Ohio. He never seems to tire, and that is one thing opposing coaches find very discouraging. They can put all kinds of players on him, but it's hard to shut him down. Jamerson tries again, can't get it, but guess what? Nate Craig is there, and Chandler Thompson rebounds. 
Boy, OU has already had about four or five offensive rebounds that Ball State can't afford to give up. That's a charge. Oh, got a, blood, got a break. Number 20, that is Chad Gill. And Gill got the foul, so no shooting foul. Sean Parrish drew it as he tried to drive the baseline. Gill just was not set, Tom. Well, he's moving. He, he really had pretty good position, but he was still moving. That was a good good move by Sean. He just took it to the whole strong, which he does as well as anyone. Mike Spicer is in, and Tom, you called it exactly right. Scotty Nichols sits down, so they're rotating shooting guards and, and point guards. Exactly, and I think that's probably a good move because Scotty Nichols and Spicer are really good ball handling guards. Now, we have not seen that yet this year. That's well, a change. This is something that the coach has been working on, and uh, again, Larry Eustace mentioned that to me before the game. That's what Thompson, to no good. Boy, it was in there. Flipped right out. 13-7. to seven. Cardinals lead it by six. They left. They led by as many as nine at nine to nothing. Gill wanted to shoot, couldn't get it. Guarded by Parrish. Cardinals played one of the better defensive games Saturday against Western Michigan. Tom, you missed that one, but Orn and I were there, and they really covered up well. And outside, no good. Rebound to Kid. Whitaker tried the shot, couldn't get it. Emmanuel Cross brings it down and takes it back outside. Nothing for the break. Kid wants it. Nice dump. Out of bounds. Give it to Ohio. Sean Parrish knocked it out. It looked like a good, nice little dump move there by uh, Curtis as uh, Sean was cutting the baseline, but just kind of threw it out of bounds. Kid will sit down, and Paris McCurdy will come in at the pivot. And the referees are asking what is going on. I don't think they said there was a timeout call, but now there is. Ohio calls it. Ohio calls timeout. We are at 11.51. Cardinals lead at 13-7. You're watching Cardinal Basketball on WIPB. 13-7, 11.51 remaining first half. Really just underway. Cardinals in the lead. Nobody really taking control, although the Cardinals seem to have the, obviously with the score, the better of it. Well, they're also shooting better, Al. They're shooting 45% to Ohio's 25, and so far Dave Jamerson is 0 for 4. Looks like he's really pressing Orn, too. I think, it, again, he's caught up in his last game at home, the sure. emotional concept there. But I'm sure he's going to get it loose here in a minute. Well, he also has an opportunity to be the Mac all-time leading scorer, but he has to average 43 points, so <laughs> I don't think he'll get that one. But he can break the uh, one-season record if Ball State steals it. Chandler Thompson comes down. He'll take it up off the glass. Oh, Got it. What a beautiful control break that time with Chandler. He really, when he plays under control, he's as good as any sophomore in the league. Well, it's difficult to know which way he's going to go. He can just as easily take it right to the hole, as we know. 15-7. to seven. Cardinals on top. The lead is up to eight. It was 9 nothing. Gill with the shot. Doesn't get it. Rebound. Cardinals Chandler Thompson at 6-3. He can rebound with the best of them. Mike Spicer, the good pull-up. Emmanuel Cross, who's a good three-pointer on the outside. Parrish. Cardinals looking inside. Turn shot, good turn shot by Paris McCurdy, just wouldn't go. Ball State's not getting any offensive rebounds right now, particularly when Chandler's out on the floor. You just don't have anybody in there trying to put it back in. Well, one key to victory for the Cardinals all year has been the ability to rebound on the offensive board. We'll see if they can turn that around. Ohio, Tom, packing it in pretty good and blocking out well. Whitaker on the outside, being guided by Spicer, looking inside, and so far, Jamerson does not have a point. And we're halfway through the first half. 10-15 remains. Craig drives, puts it up. What a shot. Forced all the way. Rebound sure Chandler is. Thompson. And a foul on the inside on Craig. You know, OU is really packing it in tough on the offensive board. It's almost like they're trying to crash and get a few, which they have tonight. But I tell you what, they're really vulnerable in behind. If Ball State ever gets a transition going, and they, we saw that one with Chandler Thompson on the control break. They're really uh, open behind the Ohio U defense. Foul on Craig. Common foul out of bounds, and Cardinals take it over. Thompson really rebounding a foul, and it looks like it's on Ohio as he fought through the pick, and Paris McCurdy was knocked down, and that's a rarity. Well, it was a nice, nice pick in there. They were, they're set, really, Ball State's doing a nice job out on the offensive end of really setting some good screens, getting some good curls coming off those screens. They're doing a nice job of the offense right now. That's a 15. Fifth team foul Fifth on Ohio. Fifth team foul on Ohio, and Chandler sits down, and Roman Mueller on the inside, and a foul on Mueller. Very quickly as 
They tried to block Mueller out, and they said he pushed off. That's the 15 foul on us. So we're even up. 15 to 7. Cardinals lead is 8 9 59. Actually, 10 minutes remain in the first half. Whitaker on the outside. That's number 22. Reggie Rankin is into the ball game. And 31, who doesn't have any weight on him at all, Rick Hoffman is into the ball game. He is 6'9". He is 7 feet, I take it back, and 187 pounds. He makes Roman look like a weight weightlifter. Shot up and good, David Jamerson. Yeah, nice individual move there by Dave Jamerson. Got the Paris McCurdy off his feet, and that's trouble when you can do that. Jamerson, uh, you knew, had to score, and he finally got it. Kind of the off-balance, one-handed push, and they made it good. 15-9. to nine. Cardinals still on top. They've led the whole way. Ball rejected. Jamerson. Parrish tried to get it inside to Mueller. Well, uh, Sean just kind of telegraphed that pass. David Jemerson knew exactly where he was trying to throw it. Kent is up at Central Michigan. They're on the same time we are. Their game started at 8 o'clock as ours did, so we'll hope that we can have some scores for you. McCurdy with the shot, doesn't get it, a foul. It's on Ohio, and McCurdy will go to the free throw line. Let's watch it. Here's the replay. No question about this one. Ferris just takes it strong up, and uh, he got hit on the arm going up. Hoffman got the foul, that 16 foul. Next one will put the Cardinals in the one and bonus. Paris bags the first one. 16 to nine, Cardinals on top. And on the year, McCurdy shooting 66%. Next one is no good. Rebound, knocked around, Hoffman gets it. Boy, he is skinny as a rail. <laughs> Foul on the outside. Spicer gets the call as Whitaker is really a load, Tom, to handle with his speed. Well, he's just so quick, and they got two quick guards out there, as we've alluded to before. Gill and Whitaker just really move very quickly. They try to penetrate. They make a lot of things happen. You really got to be alert and help out on defense. Outside, Jamerson. Bingo. McCurdy right on him, but Jamerson, who has one of the quickest releases we have ever seen, narrows the gap to five. It's 16 to 11. And he can be a game-breaker. Had 52 against Kent on Saturday. Kent still won the ball game. Inside, we've got a foul before the shot and a foul on McCurdy. They said he backed in. Sam Lecklider with the call, and McCurdy will go out. Kidd will come back in, as will Scotty Nichols. That's the 17 foul, so they're going to the free throw lane. Spicer and McCurdy will sit down. Cardinals now with... Roman Mueller, Sean Parrish, and Curtis Kidd down low. At guards, Emmanuel Cross and Scotty Nichols. At the free throw line, Chad Gill, a freshman from Columbus, Ohio. Gill on the year, averaging just five points a game, shooting about 59% from the free throw line. First of the bonus, bonus, no good. Rebound to the Cardinals. Mueller got the board. And Cardinals will bring it down. Neither team really setting anything on fire. It's 16 to 11, 820 remaining in the first half. A three shot on the outside, good. That's exactly what the coach has been working a lot on with the kids. Dump it in, dump it back out. You open up that three-point shooter out there and cross buried at that time. Emmanuel nice Cross with the good three, and Cross can be a shooter. If he's hot, Tom, he had 27 at Eastern Michigan earlier this year. And he's Ball State's best three shooter. Gill with the reverse, doesn't get it. Rebound, Cardinals. Mueller had it, but Cross picked it up. If the Cardinal coaches would like to do one thing, Tom, with Mueller, it's to make him have stronger hands and really go after the ball with a vengeance. Mueller, turn on the drive, he traveled. Yeah, well, it looked like a good move, and it was a good move if you get away with it because he really did travel. Chandler Thompson off the bench. He'll come back into the ball game. We'll see who he's in for. It's Roman Mueller, and the Cardinals back with almost their original starting lineup. Leobold is back in for Miami, as is Nate Craig. So Craig and Whitaker back at the original guard positions. Looking inside, trying to find Jamerson, trying to find Hoffman, somebody. 
Jamerson averaging 31 a game. Nobody else for Ohio in double figures. And Chandler Thompson on the outside got him across the top of the head. And there's no way to stop him. As Jamerson got around him. Well, when you get beat like that, you might as well just let it go because uh, what happened that time, he is such a controlled shooter, Alan. You'll see it here. It just doesn't affect him. He's got great hand balance, great release on the ball. See right there, he hit him, but he concentrated all the way. A good shooter always concentrates. He doesn't worry about getting hit around. Kind of a sophomore mistake for Thompson. Gave Jamerson a chance for a three, and he got it. 19-14. The lead is five on a three-point play by Dave Jamerson who was held scoreless for the first 10 minutes of this ball game. Scotty Nichols looks inside. Comes around. Emmanuel Cross to Chandler Thompson. We'll use playing a little matchup zone they play. Stolen by Whitaker. He came right across Kid. Kid on the drive, just couldn't control it. Whitaker on the drive. Passes it off. Good. Lebo. And back come the Bobcats. It's a three-point Cardinal lead. Well, OU is doing two things very well right now. They're penetrating, driving down the lane. They're also playing in the matchup zone, which is giving Ball State some problems. Well, the Cardinals call timeout, and we're at 6.46 remaining, 19 Ball State, 16 Ohio. You're watching Ball State basketball on WIPB. Overall, the Cardinals are 11-3 and three in the MAC and 19-6 uh, and six overall. Let's take a look at that last play, Tom. Well, again, you're going to see him just uh, as he goes down the lane. He just tripped, strips it right there. That, that matchup zone's taken away, and now they're just going to penetrate. They look for the opening right here. He penetrates. He keeps going. And again, Whitaker does that as well as anybody. Dumps it off, and number 41, Lebo, just dumps it in. So, he again, they're doing a nice job on the defensive end because the defense created that bucket. Well, Billy Butts back into the ball game. Emmanuel Cross sits down, and we've got Butts and Scotty Nichols at the guards. Down low, we remain the same. Parrish, Thompson, and Kidd. 6.45 to go in this first half, and it's a three-point Cardinal lead at 19-16. Butts with the ball in his hands with a three already. Parrish on the outside. Got it. Sean Parrish, who shot well against Western, did the unusual, Tom, and almost got a three-point yeah, play. Just stepped right on the line there. So Parrish gives the Cardinals a needed basket. 21-16. The lead's back to five. Pass inside, Lebel takes it back outside. Outside is Jamerson, no good, rebound, but what do we got? Traveling. Oh, Cardinals and, uh, let's see, Butts and Kidd uh, fought over the ball, and Cardinals lost. Well, again, the coach hates to see those unforced errors like that. I just Whitaker know. on the outside, no good, gets his own rebound. No one blocked him off. He'll whirl and get it. Well, Chan Chandler Thompson took off that time, didn't block his man out, and he went the other way. His man went to the bucket, put it back in. Again, a sophomore mistake. 18 to 21. Cardinals still have a three-point lead. 5.52 remaining in the first half. Inside kid. He'll turn. Flip it. No good. Rebound. Thompson. No good. Rebound. It's a foul. It's on Jamerson. Boy, Chandler Thompson is all over the bank boards. He's got such great body control in there. He knows where the ball is. He has a nose for that ball. Does a nice job going up and under control. Well, I think they called it on Jamerson. Was that correct, Jeff? That's right. Well, he was complaining like it was. Yeah. Chandler Thompson goes to the free throw line. He'll have a chance to shoot two. Shooting 75%. No good. It was a one and bonus. Rebound inside. Who's going to get it? Cardinals. Nope. Ohio. No, it's Cardinals. No, it's Cardinals. I've got a cheerleader directly in front of me. Roman Mueller comes back in. Sean Parrish will sit down. Cardinals going for a little more size inside. Scotty Nichols inbounds to Chandler Thompson. He'll shoot off the glass. Doesn't get it. Roman Mueller fouled from behind. And that'll be on Hoffman. As seven-footer versus seven-footer. And Robo had the better position. So Mueller will go to the free throw line. 21-18, 5-37. This is not what you consider a barn burner for either team, but the Cardinals maintaining enough poise for a three-point lead. Mueller on the year. It's it shooting 63%. Cardinals started out the year free throw shooting just miserably, but have picked it up dramatically. 
and averaged about 71% on, on each game. Second one, no good. Long rebound to Whitaker. Story of the Cardinals tonight is hit one, miss one. 22, Cardinals, 18, Ohio. It's a four-point Cardinal lead. Five and a half to go, first half. Jamerson passes. Leibold wants to move. He'll take it up. Throws a brick up there. Boy, was it flat. Knocked out of bounds. Give it to Ohio. Cardinals, again, did not have position. Well, Leibold just kind of fired a flat shot. Well, he's not a real shooter at all, and he normally doesn't shoot that shot. He usually penetrates or posts up. Whitaker with the three. It's off. Nobody got it. And let's see. We've got it out of bounds to Ball State. I'll tell you what. OU is hustling on the offensive boards tonight. They really are crashing the boards and trying to make a difference in the ball game that way. Nothing to lose. Ohio is going to end up in eighth place in the conference. They are 5-9 and nine in the MAC. In fact, if Ball State wins this game tonight, Al, this is a rematch, rematch it's going to see in the first round of the tournament. So OU and Ball State. Billy Butts on the outside, looks in, he'll drive around. Chandler Thompson wants the shot. He's going to drive and take it off the glass. He got it. Just great body control. Well, this is Chandler Thompson's game as he is providing the offense for the Cardinals. 24-18. Cardinals has, lead to six. Excuse me. Chandler has nine points so far in the first half, and Jamerson, ten. Well, Scotty Nichols with the foul. David Jamerson with the shot. You know, when he goes up, guys, you might as well just let it go. Well, they got Scotty Nichols on him, and again, Scotty's giving away some height there. And when you get the ball to him, he's going to really give you some trouble. And you can see it right here on a replay. When they get the ball to him, and with the size disadvantage, unless he gets some help, he fades away, and he fades away so well. He has such great hand control with the ball. I mean, you can shoot leaning like that when you got that kind of hand control. Jamerson, they say, will be uh, a late first-round pick in the NBA draft, and. We can certainly understand why. He's got it all. Well, he's a very intelligent young man. I think he plays very much under control. And great stamina. For the NBA, you have to have that. He really shows that. Billy Butts on the drive. Takes it back outside. OU playing excellent defense. It's 24-21. They're switching their defenses up a little bit. Kidd with the shot. Got it. Curtis Kidd, nice controlled jump shot. And no way that Ohio can combat that as they have nobody of Kidd's size in there right now. The closest is Chad Gill at 6'5", and Jamerson is 6'5". Blocked by Roman. Again, they got it back. Oh, right place, right time. They forgot well, Jamerson, and he was all alone. Ball State's not covering up very well defensively right now. They're not checking the men off the boards, and that's getting them some trouble. Well, I'm sure Dick Hunsaker and company will talk about that at halftime. 26-23, 3.40 to go in the first half. Cardinals still on top. Now they're back in that little matchup zone they play. It's kind of a 2-3 matchup where everybody in the zone has a man of responsibility. Chandler into Robo. He'll turn. Drops down through. Got the roll. Robo got the roll and he's happy. 28-23. It's a five-point lead. 3.15 to go in the first half. Jamerson wants the shot. Inside, Craig off to Leibold. Leibold's going to turn back outside to Whitaker. Cardinals come out to cover up. Jamerson with the center stop. He traveled. Oh, he did. That's unusual, but he did do that. Cardinals get the turnover, and they would like a basket to equal things out. Going out is Roman Mueller. Coming in, Sean Parrish. Also going out is uh, Scotty Nichols and... Emmanuel Cross comes in. Roman added another block shot to his string of about 42. In fact, I think he leads the Mac in block shots. He does. 2.58 to go, first half, 28-23. Cardinals on top. Now they've got two three-point shooters at guards. They've got two shooting guards outside. Butts with the popper. Bingo! Another three. That's because they're in that zone right now, and they're going to have to have somebody outside to be able to hit them. Well, the Cardinals, who had just a three-point lead, now up it to eight, five unanswered points. Whitaker on the drive, puts it up. It's good. Nice Whitaker shot. is the nemesis of the Cardinals in the backcourt. He's well, taking our guards to school. Well, he really is. He's, he's got a lot of capabilities. He really hasn't shown it that much this year. But down through the four years he's been here, he's been an excellent guard for it. Six-point lead. Butts wants the ball outside. Back to Manuel Cross. Inside. Kid yeah. knocked away. To foul on Chandler Thompson coming over. Oh, that's Chandler's third foul. He's had such a great night so far. We, you know, you really hate to see that right now. Well, Chandler Thompson will go out, and Greg Miller, the senior from Yorktown, will come into the ball game. 
Well, again, I think that was created by Curtis Kidd being a little bit uh, out of control in the offensive end. He tried to turn in, try to make something happen that time, and where he's been doing an excellent job in the last few games of really getting the ball moving, then dumping it into him when he's open. But that time he turned right into traffic and had it stripped. They're doubling up on Curtis a little bit also when he gets the ball inside. They surely scouted the last two games to see that Curtis is back. Leibold shooting 57%, and he gets his first one. That was the important one. You got to have number one to have number two, and he'll try it. 31-26. It's a five-point lead. Cardinals still on top. 2-11 in the first half. Remains. Second one up, and it is good. So the 57% shooter shoots a thousand percent on those two. Cardinals bring it down, looking for some offense. Greg Miller seeing his first action tonight, and Miller can hit from many places. They're back in that good man defense. They're playing real strong man defense tonight. Kid with the turn. No Not good. Not a good shot. See, Not again, a good shot by a Kid. Shot. You can't force him. you got to get the ball moving. you got to swing it. Then you get it dumped down, and then you can take that good shot. Kid seemed to be in a shooting mind and had to take it. Whitaker on the outside. They could narrow the gap to three again. Gill on the turn. No good. Rebound to the Cardinals. Curtis Kidd gets it. And again, Ohio really tried to cover up and did a pretty good job. Jamerson, who's all over the court, was in on that rebound. Kid just snared it. 123 remaining. Greg Miller with the ball in his hands. Emmanuel cross. Whitaker on Emmanuel. Butts to Miller. Miller to Butts. Butts inside. Kid. Nice. Miller alone, and he nice. got it. Nice recognition by Billy Butts that time to see Miller and, and Curtis Kid break free underneath. Nice job by Billy. So the Cardinals get a much-needed basket, 33-27, 57 seconds remain, first half. Cardinals have led from the outset. Biggest lead was nine at nine zip. Jamerson on the outside. Jamerson in double figures after he did not score in the first 10 minutes. Whitaker going to sit on it. 22 on the shot clock. Well, they can't run it out, that's for sure. So the Cardinals will have the last shot at the basket. Whitaker, he'll make a move. Emmanuel Cross, good defense. Outside, there's Jamerson, no good. Rebound, Greg Miller. Cardinals covered up well. And Cardinals will get the last shot. 23 seconds remaining. Billy Butts dropped the ball. He's asking himself if he's got Slickum on his hands. He needs a little stickum instead. Miller. 11 seconds remaining. Miller. He'll drive, knocked away. Sean Parrish, fouled. And Parrish will go to the free throw line with a one and bonus. That was the one that almost got away that fell into Parrish's hands. Oh, that was a big break for Ball State because uh, Greg tried to drive there and D Jamerson just knocked it out, really knocked it right to Sean Parrish. Real break, big break. Parrish goes to the free throw line. A good free throw shooter for the night, uh, for the year. 60, 79, take it back, 77% on the year. Could use a couple here. Big arch, no good. Cardinals have been average, just average in the first half. Scotty Nichols will come in very quickly. Defensive move. And he'll take uh, Greg Miller's place as the Cardinals want in the last seven seconds a chance to defense and keep Ohio from getting the last basket. 33-27, Cardinals lead it. Sean Parrish with the second free throw of a two shot. He gets that one, 34-27. Cardinals go into defense, seven seconds remain. Whitaker will bring it down quickly, four, three. There he comes, he'll throw it up. Will he get it off? He did, are they gonna count it? They did. Well, you can't play any better defense than uh, cross plate on him that time, but he just buried that thing. He, he does a nice job of getting the ball down the floor about as quickly as any guard that I've seen for a while. Well, Emmanuel Cross was on him, and they say Whitaker was in the act of shooting, and it counts. It goes through. So the half winds up with the Cardinals on top by five, and that's a certainly where they wanted him. Tom, historically, when the Cardinals are ahead at halftime, they win more of their game. Well, I think uh, both teams played a little ragged, very honestly. I I think uh, one of the things that Ohio U did very well was hit the offensive boards in that first half. On Ball State's part, I think they did a nice job, offensive movement. They didn't always get the good shot, but they were doing a good job on the offensive end. Well, the Cardinals lead at halftime from Convention Center in Athens, Ohio. 
the campus of the Bobcats. Ball State ahead, 34-29. You're watching Cardinal Basketball on WIPB. Halftime, 34 Cardinals. Ohio's Bobcats, 29 of note. Uh, Jamerson didn't score a point for his first 10 minutes of the ball game, but then he really unleashed some points, and Oren will have statistics for us in a little bit. Earlier this week, I had a chance to talk with Vice President for University Advancement, Jack Miller. Jack is uh, being inst is very instrumental in helping the Wings of the Future campaign get underway and build what uh, is going to be a premier athletic facility on the campus at Ball State and that awaited new arena. Our halftime guest, Jack Miller, Vice President, University Advancement for Ball State University. And a lot of construction going on around University Gym as we've been seeing it for how many months now have we been under construction around here? Well, we've been under construction for, I guess, about 14 months. And uh, we'll be done, hopefully, in May with Phase 1 of the Health Physical Activity and Arena Complex. That's a mouthful. But when we get it all done, it's a very big building now. The building that, that people will see under construction now, which will be completed in June of this summer, uh, will contain 10 new racquetball courts, the headquarters for the Human Performance Laboratory, which is Dave Costell's operation, the Wellness Institute, five classrooms for health and physical education, uh, along with offices for men's and women's intercollegiate sports. So the first phase is more of a classroom office type facility, which will nicely complement the arena when it's up and running. And we'll really add a dimension to what we call this whole complex now, which will be Llewellyn Pool, University Gym, the Field Sports Building, and Gym 2, along with the new arena and the health and physical activity portion of the building, will all be interconnected. So you just go from one to the other and wander through this maze of physical activity. What will happen to the current complex? Current complex will be remodeled to some degree. University Gym will be remodeled after the arena is completed and open. Uh, will continue to be used for health and physical activity classroom uh, facilities, as well as recreation and intramural operations for students in general. Let's talk about the arena. That's where most of the excitement lies, because we're looking at, instead of 6,800 fan seats, over maybe close to 12,000. Well, 11,714, I think, is the number, probably. Uh, it's going to be an interesting building. I call it the building that's designed to relieve back pain uh, to the citizens of Muncie, because those... Uh, uh, citizens of Muncie who've been coming to games for years know that we've had bleachers uh, in the new building. We're going to have first-class seats with backs and etc. So uh, it's a building that will be a fine place to watch basketball, and we hope we can keep the tradition going that we've had the last two or three years, and, and even years before that, because Muncie as a community has a rich basketball tradition when you combine the Muncie Central and Yorktown and all of the other county high schools along with the university. So we think we're going to have a palace, so to speak, as befitting the basketball tradition of Delaware County. It seems with the size, Jack, that it'll have a multi-purpose facility also, not just for basketball. Right, and we really have built it uh, as an institution with that in mind. Uh, some people will remember that we had uh, former President Jimmy Carter here a couple of years ago and turned away people from Evans Auditorium that wanted to see President Carter. The new building can be used for commencement, it can be used for convocations, can be used for certain kinds of concerts. I don't think we want to put the New York Philharmonic in the new arena acoustically, but for other kinds of concerts where you need 10,000 seats in order to attract a performer to Muncie, we're going to have the kind of facility to do that. So it is a multi-use facility. It also could be used for trade shows, home shows. Now, if you could do them in a time other than probably when the, we're at the busiest school year-wise in basketball, but it's going to be a place if you want to have a dinner of 2,000 of your best friends, uh, we can get a catering crew to come in and probably be able to do the dinner. So it really is an addition not just to Ball State, the university, but indeed to the entire community. And East Central Indiana, there's nothing else going to be like it in our part of the state. People are very excited about completion. Uh, you talk about the first phase being done by May or around there going into the summer months. Mm -hmm. How about the arena? The arena, uh, the plans for the arena are out in the hands of contractors now for bids. Uh, bids will be turned in uh, uh, in March, is my understanding. Uh, if everything goes right, the building should be done with the start of the 91-92 season, which means we have one more year in University Gym, and then the next year we would be in the new arena for the 91-92 season. That's the plan, that's the hope, and that's what we're aiming for right now. Jack, thanks for being with us today. I'll thank you. We're going to get back to the second half, but the arena is on its way. A lot of people are very excited. My thanks to Jack Miller, Vice President, University Advancement for Ball State. Halftime here at Ohio Convention Center. Cardinals on top, 34-29. You're watching Cardinal Basketball on WIPB. We'll be switching gears from college to high school basketball this Saturday night, March 3rd, to bring you the championship game of the 1990 Muncie Sectional. Opening round play is taking place tonight. Semifinals are scheduled for Friday night to determine the matchup for Saturday night. 
Tom Simpson and Orrin Olinger will bring you all the action pregame at 7, the championship game of the 1990 Muncie Sectional, Saturday, March 3rd, 7 o'clock, right here on WIPB. Halftime here at uh, Convention Center in Athens, Ohio. Home of the Bobcats. Cardinals lead 34-29 with our statistics. Owen Olinger. Well, Al, from the field, Ball State is really having a good night tonight as they are 13 for 23 from the field, shooting 56%. From the three-point range, it's, you know, they're becoming all of a sudden a three-point team as they were four for four for 100%. However, from the free throw line, they were four for nine, shooting 44%. Total rebounds, Ball State for 20. They out-rebounded Ohio 5 that half out, so that was certainly good for Ball State also. Individually leading for Ball State, we have Thompson scoring with 9 points, Kidd for 6, and Butts for 6. On the other side, Ohio team-wise, really not shooting very well from the field at all. They're shooting about 39% as they were 12 for 31. And what's really also kind of interesting is really hurt them a lot this first half as they were 0 for 9 from the three-point range. However, from free throws, they were 5 for 7, shooting 71%. As I said earlier, they had 15 total rebounds. Leading their scoring, which is no surprise, was Dave Jamerson, as he had 12 points during that first half. He was 5 for 11 and two free throws, so once he started turning on now, he really came through and played very well. Whitaker has really hurt us. Whitaker's hit or hurt us on the transition and hurt us on some of our turnovers as he's gone on down to the, the end of the field and scored with 9 points total. Whitaker is individual rebound, and Whitaker has four. Craig has four. And Chandler Thompson, not only is having a great half uh, offensively, a great half rebound, as he had seven. Only problem is, Al, Chandler has three personal fouls. Turnovers, Ball State eight, Ohio University five. So some of the stats look very good for Ball State. We really want Chandler Thompson. Hope he doesn't get that fourth foul early because he had a great first half. Thank you. Thanks very much, Oren. Well, uh, we are at halftime, and the Cardinals lead, and Chandler Thompson so far, along with Curtis Kidd and Billy Butts, carrying the show. We'll see what happens in the second half. We're about three minutes away. You're watching Cardinal Basketball on WIPB. The good news is Cardinals lead at halftime by 5, 34-29. The bad news, Tom... Chandler Thompson has three personal fouls. Well, again, Chandler was very active in the first half, Al. He did a lot of good things in transition, played good defense. Really was the offensive rebounder, actually. I don't think anybody else got too many in the first half. But when you're active like that, you're going to pick up some of those fouls. And again, I think they were all active fouls, and you really can't fault Chandler for that. He really has had some problems playing on the road this year, and I'm sure the coaches are really happy to see him get that active but of course you know you got to be able to play and not pick up the next two but he's been a very instrumental factor tonight well he sure has been on the rebounds uh, on the boards uh Orney had how many boards that first half he had seven he led all rebounders with seven so he had a great first half halftime score from uh, central michigan or well central michigan is down 22 to kent's 30 however i noticed earlier in the game they were down like 20 almost like 22 to 9 so Apparently, Central Michigan came back in the last part of the first half to score real well. Miami is leading at Western, leading Western 51 to 35 at the half, and Toledo at Eastern is behind 25 to 38. So that's no surprise that Eastern's leading Toledo. Eastern really is a team that's coming on, and it's going to be an interesting tournament. Cardinals in control of their own destiny. They need to win tonight to clinch at least a tie for their MAC regular season championship and they would draw the eighth place team in the tournament, which will be played uh, on Friday, Friday evening of next week. Should they uh, lose tonight, Kent and, and Kent win, then Kent and Ball State would be tied with absolutely identical records. Ball State and Kent would be tied both overall and uh, in the, uh, well, I take that back, Ball State would be one loss up in the overall column. Our special thanks to Athletic Director Harold McElhaney here at OU, Director of Sports Media Relations, Glenn Coble, and Sports Information Director, Frank Morgan, and their staffs for fine, fine work and great hospitality they've shown us. Also, a big thank you to Key Chevrolet in Muncie for providing transportation with one of those luxury Key Chevrolet vans for your friendly announcing team on WIPV. Thanks very much to Key Chevrolet from all of us. 34 Cardinals and 29 Ohio. Second half just about ready to start. Cardinals on alternate possessions. We'll get the ball out of bounds first. They'll move right to left on your screen. And here we go. 20 more minutes. Cardinals want to put this one in the victory column. They want to get their second consecutive 20-game season. 
and that'll be quite some accomplishment. McCurdy, who didn't score the first half. Butts, back to McCurdy. Good Cardinals moving it around. McCurdy on the turn. Got it! Excellent ball movement that time, Al. That's what they have to do a little bit more of. Cardinals, good ball rotation, and I have a feeling, Tom, they talked a lot about that in the half. Exactly. Time. OU. OU is down once again by seven. It is 36-29. Cardinals OU. on top. Second half action just underway OU. from the Convention Center in Athens, Ohio. OU. Convocation Center, I am corrected. They could also hold conventions here. It's a big place. Inside, Lee Bolt. Oh, he lost control. Rebound, no good. Wait a minute. Well, we've got uh, Curtis Kidd throwing the ball out of bounds. He came off of it with uh, Gill. Well, you know Lebo for a 6'5 kid, this does a great job inside. Ball State right now, is, they're, they're concentrating so much on where Jamerson is on the floor, they're really not doing a good job of uh, blocking out and getting in good rebounding position on the defensive boards right now. That's true. We'll, uh, we'll try to improve our, our vision here as the cheerleaders are standing in front of us. We are right in front of the Ohio sixth man section which is filled with students with a lot of green and white on. Good double up that time on Jamerson. The ball doesn't hit anything. I asked you this last week, Tom. Is that a rebound? Uh, no, that's air ball. That's air ball and that's a pass. Paris McCurdy got the errant shot. Cardinals lead it by 7, 36-29 as McCurdy got the first basket of the second half. Is that right, Orn? Is that his first two? Yes, it is. So he, had two, he had two free throws in the first half. That was his first basket. We've got a charge on Kidd uh, as good. Gill did a nice job of acting, but exactly. he got the call. Exactly. He had a good acting job. I'm not sure he really hit him. Well, Gill gets the call, and the Cardinals turn it over as Kidd gets the call for the offensive foul. Kidd much more active the last couple of games. Coaches, Tom, talked to him about forgetting how the knee feels and forgetting the knee injury, come back and play. Well, I think he's in the game more emotionally, and that's very important. I think he's been concentrating and worrying a little bit too much about the knee. Jamerson on Gill, and Gill is fouled by Butts. Butts got his arm tangled up as he was trying to go for the ball. OU doing a very good job of moving the ball around and finding the open man. Cardinals having trouble staying with it. Well, you know, you really look at the OU team, they don't have a pivot man. And, you know, when you don't have a pivot man with a couple of uh, big kids, particularly like Curtis Kidd and Roman Mueller, when he comes in, that's difficult to play against a team like that. Of course, on the other side of the coin, they're quicker inside, and they've taken advantage of that, I think, on the offensive boards. Well, Paris McCurdy seems to have a bloody nose as he took one on the bridge of the nose. And Sam Lechleiter gave them an official's timeout. Call that a medical timeout, I get. 18 uh, 07 remaining in the in the ball game. 36 Cardinals, 29 OU, and McCurdy will sit down and rest that nose for a moment, try to stop the flow. And Sean Parrish will come in. So Parrish goes in for McCurdy. McCurdy started playing much more actively here in the second half. Had a couple of free throws first half. Jamerson on the outside, no good. Rebound, Scotty Nichols. Jamerson. Not one of his better games. Inside nice Chandler push. Thompson, nice the stuff push. and a foul. That's a nice push up the floor by Scotty Nichols and a nice dump inside by Sean Perry. That's a nice little transition break. Here's a little replay on a transition break. Sean sees Chandler break across, and he just goes up strong with it, knowing he was going to get hacked. Chandler Thompson with the good, strong, typical Chandler Thompson stuff. Nine the first half. That gives him 11 for the game and a chance to go 12. Got it. Thompson with 12. Seven boards in the first half. Led everybody. We've got a technical foul. I'm not sure who it's on. We've got a technical foul on 33. Oh, Dave, Jamerson. Dave Jamerson. He must have said something to the official as he walked away. Well, he's been upset all night for some reason. Early on the game, he was uh, saying some things to the officials, which I've never seen Jamerson do before. He usually is pretty calm. Billy Butts, a good free throw shooter, shoots the first. It's automatic two, and the Cards will get the ball out of bounds. That's really a wrong time to be doing that because they had the ball, and now they lose the ball. Cardinals did not get two. Butts rolled off. Oren, first half free throw shooting statistics for the Cardinals were what? Well, the first half free throw shooting was not really very good. as They were 44% as they were four for nine. All right, we'll take a break. It's 40-29. Cardinals on top. You're watching Cardinal basketball on WIPB. Well, quick turn of events, and... 
Coach Larry Tucker and uh, Larry, Sam Lechleiter talk discussing the situation. Well, Larry Hunter really Larry is Hunter, upset about so. something. I'm not sure what he's upset about, but he was really getting all over. Probably that tee, and the Cardinals have surged to an 11-point lead. Butts with the ball in his hands. They had two shots. Butts hit one and missed one on the tech. He'll try the shot on the outside, in and out, and there's, Curtis Kidd has it knocked out of bounds. Okay, there's a good offensive board. Ball State hasn't had too many of those tonight. Ohio went into that matchup zone that time and really were freeing up. Ball State's freeing some people up outside. Cardinals need to hit the outside shot as they'll flip back and forth into that zone. They're back into their man-to-man. -man. Butts on the outside, looks inside. Scotty Nichols, Billy Butts at guard. Sean Parrish has come into the ball game for Curtis Kidd, who now has pressure on the nose. Chandler Thompson gets the foul. Doesn't get it. He draws the foul on Leibold. That's four on Leibold. And that's a break for the Cardinals because Leibold is a very strong player. He's done an excellent job tonight for the talent. He's, he's really not as talented, but he really is a hustler in there and gives 100%. Well, Chandler Thompson will go to the free throw line. He'll have two. First one is good. Just kind of soft pedals it in there. As smooth as Chandler moves, the ball just kind of glides through the net. Second of two coming. And he gets the rolls. The Cardinals finally bag two in a row, and it's 42 to 29. That is by far the biggest lead. It's 13 points. 17, 16 to go in the ball game. Can they maintain the intensity and the lead? We've seen them dwindle before. Whitaker nice taken job. away. Sean, Sean Perry. Parrish. He'll drive it down and take it right back outside, and quickly, Scotty Nichols covers up, and Cardinals will go on offense. Defense! Defense! Inside, Curtis Kidd all alone. He doesn't get it. You could see it was rolling around. Well, you could see he had a bad angle on it, very honestly. He's almost all the way under the back. Well, the call underneath. It's yeah. going to be on OU, and it looks like it's on Jamerson. Well, that's not going to make the fans happy at all because Jamerson wasn't happy with that call and he got the technical. And he was actually shoving off of Scotty Nichols there. And again, you can't do that. Scotty's really hanging in tight. And Jamerson's getting a little frustrated right now. One of the things the coaches, Cardinal coaches, said was to shut, shut down Dave Jamerson, you have to deny him the ball. That means if he gets it in his hands, he's a lethal weapon. But if you can keep it out of his hands, and that's what they're trying to do, then you have an opportunity. Curtis Kidd, he's going to turn, flip. He got the roll. Uh, nice flash, Curtis, that time. Not the best shot. He wasn't in his control, but he flashed into that low post area real well. And did you see whose hands were above the rim <laughs> to make right. sure it stayed there? He was ready to play ping pong. Sean Parrish gets decked, and Jamerson gets the two. Sean Parrish really got pushed. He came up okay. That's two points for OU, and it's 44-31. Cardinals on top. 16 exactly remaining in the ball game. Chandler Thompson with one of his best road games we have seen. Billy Butts. Inside, Curtis Kidd turns. Oh, doesn't get it. Rebound. Whitaker. What a great first half Whitaker had. He's been a little quiet here. Second half, we got a foul. Butts. I'll tell you what, that kid can move as quickly on a dime. He can change directions, and he's gone. and Just accelerate. Scotty could not. You can see it. Scotty couldn't even handle him. He penetrates so well. Right now, he is gone. That first big step, and he's by everybody, and he's going right. to make some things happen. I thought Butts got the reach in, and it was Nichols on the push as he went by, and all Butts was seeing was smoke oh, as he was moving. Dennis Whitaker. You really got to stay in front of him because he can get by you real quick. Jamerson looks off. It is off. Rebound. Chandler Thompson. Oh, Lebo. And blocked by Chandler Thompson. Fans oh, want goaltending. Whitaker. Bingo with three. Well, they got a three instead of a two, but I think they probably were right. Chandler Thompson got the deflection. Could have been goaltending. The Cardinals got a break, but they still got the three. There's Thompson. Looks inside. Inside the kid. He got it. Yes. Great aggressive move by Curtis. Right. He was powered. Curtis. Power move. Well, Curtis is back, and Curtis likes it. When Curtis smiles, you know. There's a replay on it, and you'll see him just really make a good power move on the replay here. In a moment. And there we go. Comes. He dumps it inside. Good, good recognition in there by Chandler, and he just powers it to the bucket. 
And the third foul on Dave Jamerson. Here's another replay, and you can see Curtis go up strong. He was well balanced that time. He was not out of control. Coach Hunsaker says that Curtis Kidd is the emotional leader of this team. When well, his attitude is right, the Cardinals go right. Free throw doesn't go. Rebound taken off by McCurdy. Foul, oh, offensive foul on oh, McCurdy. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Boy, that's, uh, that's a tough call there. Well, it was a difficult call, and the officials made it against the Cardinals. 46 Ball State, 34 OUs. Kid missed the free throw. Kid not having a good year at the free throw line, shooting just 63%. You know, the one thing with Dennis Whitaker bringing the ball up the floor right here, you have to keep him in front of you as we've seen him blow by a lot of <laughs> right. people. But on the on the defensive chart, when they talk about Whitaker, you, that's way, exactly what it says. Stay in, in front of him. Lee Bow got the basket. Well, I'll tell you what, he's done a nice job tonight. He's not a shooter out there, but he's sure proving we're wrong right now. From he, the free throw line. He has eight points. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, he, he put the elbow out and whacked Curtis that time. Well, yeah. Whitaker, who plays so well, had the unnecessary foul, and that is a foul on Dennis Whitaker. In at guards. Chandler Thompson has now gone back to guard along with Mike Spicer. We failed to note that Scotty Nichols and Billy Butts had both sat down. So Thompson is now outside, although he'll play anywhere he can, and there's yeah. a foul reaching over, and that is on Craig. Check the team fouls, Orrin. That's 16 fouls. One more, and the Cardinals will go to the one and bonus line, and we'll hope they shoot better the first, the second half than they did the first half. Cardinals on a 10-point lead. He traveled. Curtis Kidd couldn't make up his mind. He wanted to make the move, and Tom, it wasn't there, and yeah. he just he, lost it. He had some back pressure there. He had a lot of back pressure in there, so... Cardinals on a 10-point lead. They led by as many as 13, 14 and a half to go in the ball game. The OU students really firing up, and we ought to know they're right behind us. Good travel. Almost a steal. We've got a foul. Well, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> the officials are overprotecting Jamerson right now. I think after they gave him a technical, I think they reacted to that because he actually traveled out front that time. I'm surprised they didn't call it. Well, Jamerson gets the ball inbounds to Whitaker, and Ohio will put it back in play with a fresh 45. That's Ball State's fifth team foul, so they have one more to give. One more to give. There's yeah, Lee A lot Bold. of time in the ball game with 14 minutes Craig to go. on the drive. Lee Bold will shoot it again. He doesn't get it. Rebound, Chandler Thompson. Who else? The man can jump and rebound. Travel. And Paris McCurdy did. No doubt. Well, they're just making a lot of unforced errors right now. It's really kind of a ragged game right now on both teams' part. Nobody, Ball State's got control of the tempo of the game right yes. now, but again, they're rushing things a little bit. They got a good 10-point lead, but there's still 14 minutes to go in the ballgame. And a lot you of can time. see Coach Hunsaker saying, slow it down. Slow it down. You don't have to make things happen right now. They've got time, and they're running a good offensive pattern. They shot well the first half. Gill back outside to Whitaker. Whitaker's going to try the three. It's going to be short. Rebound. Well, that, to Curtis that, Kidd. Well, that time, uh, Mike Spicer did an excellent job of blocking out. Chandler Thompson! Oh, whoa. oh boy, he explodes. Oh. I think he surprised everybody, oh. particularly the defensive man. He just exploded. Mike Spicer time. with a good drive, and he saw Thompson on the wing, and he hit him with a perfect pass. Took a little wind out of the sails of the student six-man section. Whitaker. Underneath, I told you. blocked by McCurdy, but he got a little bit of Gill, and Gill will go to the free throw line. Got him with his body there, because I'm. Was that three on him? Oh, that is four on Paris That's McCurdy. Four on Here's Paris. a replay. Let's see what happens. He dumps it inside. Ooh, got his left Might hand. Might have got his body a little bit there. Well, McCurdy has four, and he will come out of the ball game, and we'll put Emmanuel <laughs> Cross into the game. And that will put Cross and Spicer at guards. Chandler will go back to forward, but I hadn't noticed that he had traded off in that <laughs> forward position. Playing with almost one guard and four, four men down low. Gill on the free throw, no good. A break for the Cardinals. Gill on the year, shooting 59%. OU really not very good from the free throw line. 66 on the year as a team. 48, 36, 13 minutes remain. 
and seven odd seconds. Another substitution, Hoffman will come in. Rick Hoffman, the seven foot sophomore from Finley, Ohio, will come in and out will go Gill. And Gill is just a freshman. OU with not much height. In fact, after Hoffman, who weighs only 187 pounds, the tallest man is 6'5". Well, so far this half, OU's only shooting 27%, as our defense has really done a good job of shutting them down. Dave Jamerson, not the 52-point track that he was on against Kent State last Saturday. Inside, kid back outside. Inside the kid, he's going to turn. He doesn't get it. Rebound, Thompson tried, couldn't get it. And Whitaker comes off with the ball. Thompson tried kind of an off-balance putback, and it just wouldn't go. Whitaker wants to drive. He'll take it inside. He doesn't get it. Rebound, Thompson. Good defense by Mike Spicer. One-on-one. -on -one. Thompson. Never had control. Pick it up. Emmanuel Cross with the ball. It's taken away. Cross tried to make too many things happen, yeah. and he lost it. Never did have control of it. They're a man short down here. Gill with the shot. No good. Rebound, Hoffman. Boy. Whitaker on the outside. He'll set it back up. He finds Jamerson. No good. Rebound. Cardinals got the rebound, but they also got the foul. Sean Parrish got the foul. Leibold was the draw E of the foul, and that is the sixth team. No, I take that back. One here's, bonus. Here's a replay on that. You can see Sean Parrish was just a little bit out of control, out too far inside there, and as he tried to get it, he went back over the top of uh, the bold. Curtis Kidd will go out, and Roman Mueller comes into the ball game. His kid will sit down. And take a much-needed rest. 12 minutes remaining. Leibold gets the first. Well, he's not much what? of a free-throw shooter, but he sure is tonight. He's playing very he's well tonight. Let's, let's jinx him. He's perfect so <laughs> far tonight. You know, he's a senior. He's a football Three. player, and he's done an excellent job for him tonight. Really gave them an extra spark inside because they really don't have anyone inside. Well, you know, you got to say a lot of good things about this OU team. They've hit, been hit with adversity early in the year with the loss academically of some players, some discipline problems, and they've been playing with a, almost a skeleton crew. And yet they played hard, and especially hard tonight, and Cardinals get a good rebound. Well, they're really scrappy tonight. They're coming out playing aggressive defense, and they're really going after the boards, particularly on the offensive end. They're doing an excellent job. I know Robo got the rebound, but I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Chandler Thompson made it happen with the tip back. Mike Spicer went down. The football player went over him. Mueller with the shot, doesn't get it. That was a nice move by Roman, just rolled out. Mueller had a good good one, and it just rolled off the top. It's a 10-point Cardinal lead. 11 and a half to go in the ball game. Hoffman, 7-footer versus 7-footer. Actually, Roman's got him by about an inch. Craig wants the inside, can't find it. Whitaker on the outside, Spicer on him, and Spicer can stay with him quickness wise, except look at that move inside. Who's got it? It's a ping pong ball. Yeah. We're going to have a jump ball, and OU's going to get alternate possession. 11-11 remaining in the ball game. 48-38. Our score. Well, we've got a little break on the floor. What do we have? Dennis Whitaker went down in yeah, some He kind of got here. twisted a little bit. I'm not sure where if it was his leg or arm. He got twisted in a whole pile up. They called alternate possession, and so that means Ohio will get it. Looks like Whitaker's leg or knee came under some stress. He's okay. He shakes it off. What a gutsy ball player. He's a senior, as is Reggie Rankin, who has played very little tonight, Dave Jamerson, and Jerry Liebold. Jamerson with the shot. No good. There's a foul on the inside. On, it looks like Sean Parrish. That's Sean's fourth foul. Saturday will be senior day at University Gym. Boy, we hope to see a packed house. A lot of rowdy fans there as the Cardinals will play Central Michigan University. It will be the MAC televised game of the week, and that uh, means the game will start at 12.30. Seniors will be recognized before the game. First free throw is good by Jamerson, but with Jamerson, they mostly are. He's shooting 83%. They'll recognize the seniors, and there are nine of them before the start of the game at 12.30, and so I would suggest that's about 12.15. We'd love to see the fans come out early. Sean Parrish will go down. He sits down with four fouls, and Greg Miller comes in. Senior for senior. Jamerson misses one. Cardinals get the rebound. 
Chandler Thompson comes out and pulls it up. Good decision by Thompson. It's now a nine-point game. It was 13 at one point. Miller with two early in the ball game has not seen a lot of action. But he'll have a chance for three. Bingo. Boy, if Miller gets on, he can be hotter than blazes. Greg comes right off the bench. Really hadn't played much tonight and buried that one. That's a nice job by Greg. 51-39. Cardinals up the game to a 12-point game. Ten and a half to go. Lebel, Hoffman. Not much of a scoring threat. You're just kind of worried when he moves, he doesn't break. Jamerson with the shot. Won't go. Rebound. Cardinals. Fast break. Here comes Thompson on the wing. It's nice off give. to Thompson. It's foul. Nice give up by Emmanuel that time. Really nice two-man play coming down the floor. And uh, I think it's on Whitaker. As Whitaker and Leibold were in the area, and it is on Whitaker. You know, one of the things, I re here's a replay on it. And you can see a nice two-man game. Emmanuel just really draws him to him and then dumps it over to Chandler as he's breaking down the lane. He got Whitaker to turn his back, and a great job on a transition break. And Whitaker really covered up quickly. And the one thing that uh, Chandler does as well as anybody I've seen for a while, he really holds on to that ball. He goes up strong with it. He's going to take a, a semi-truck to drive it out of his hands. Well, Leibold goes out into the ball game for the first time. Jerry Hopner. Chandler made his first free throw, Al. Now he's shooting his second one. It gets All the right. roll, and Chandler does it again. For the night, Orrin, Chandler has been a scoring demon. Well, he is uh, 14, uh, 19 points now. 19 for Chandler Thompson, and a whole bushel basket of rebound. Hoffman, back outside to Craig. Rejected. Roman. Roman Mueller, Mike Spicer on the fast break. Another Chandler break. Thompson! Oh, he missed the stuff. Blocked on Hopner, but Thompson missed the stuff. Yeah, that was a sky jam coming. <laughs> I mean, that was a Michael Jordan take it from the free throw line and bury it. Well, it went in and rolled right out. He just got it just a little too hard. 18 points, I'm sorry. But we're going to make it 19 now. We missed it. Thompson will go 20. in with two. He's got two from the free throw line. First one is good. There's 19. Thompson on the year. Averaging 10 and a half points a game. He's been getting better and better. Second one is also 20. good. 20 points for Chandler Thompson. His Cardinals increase the lead to 16, 55 to 39. 950 remaining in the ball game. Hoffman on the drive, back out to Whitaker. Inside to Hoopner. Craig will shoot outside. It's a three on the way. No good over the bank board and the turnover to the Cardinals. And right now, the Cardinals are in control. You know, Tom, Jeff Hoopner had a very good game against us in uh, Muncie, and this is the first exactly. we've seen him play tonight. No, he got 13 points. He really was a main <laughs> factor in keeping them in the game in that game of Ball State, but I'm surprised he hasn't played more. Emmanuel Cross on the outside. Spicer Miller, who just bagged the three a little while ago. Cross wanted the shot. You could see it. He'll take it anyway. Oh, did he get it? They gave him two. Gave him two. They that's said he was on the line, but that's okay. It counts, and it's an 18-point Cardinal lead at 57-39. Well, they got their shooting eyes on right now. When they get that going with their defense, it's tough to beat them. Back outside, number 22 into the ball game, Rankin. Whitaker looks inside. We've got a call inside. Who's it on? Yeah, they're trying to hold Jamerson off the ball, trying to break through the ball, and I think Emmanuel or somebody on the other side there grabbed him. Well, Jamerson will go to the free throw line. You can pretty well put these two into the scoring column as timeout is on the floor. Timeout, 57, Ball State, 39 for Ohio. And you know, Tom, this uh, lead has just continued to build almost unnoticed. Well, Ball State's doing an excellent job on the offensive end because they're really moving, getting good ball movement right now and getting the good shot out. When they get good golf, ball movement and shooting as well as they have been the last few games, they're going to build this kind of a lead. This Ball State Cardinal basketball game is telecast under broadcast rights granted by Ohio University and is solely intended for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any use of this telecast without the express written consent of Ohio University and WIPB is prohibited. Well, Cardinals really on a roll. They seem, Tom, to have 
solve some of their ball movement problems and are really uh, building that lead nicely. It is at 18 points. It is at 19 points. And the other thing that's happening on the other end is Jamerson's not getting into the game as much. Now, I know they fouled Jamerson that time away from the ball, but they're doing a nice job. Here's a replay on that big slam jump that uh, Chandler, see, he took off from about 10 feet out, but he still got in there. He had a good chance to make that. Really kind of fortunate he didn't get a charge on that. If uh, they would have got set on that, he'd been in trouble. But again, they're getting good ball movement. They've got their transition game going, as was, it was depicted by that. They've just got their total game rolling very well right now and playing well on the defensive end, keeping the ball out of Jamerson's hands. My mathematics is only semi good. It's an 18. It's an it's an 18 point lead. 57, 39. We'll take it any way we can get it. Jamerson at the free throw line. He is an 83 percent free throw shooter. <coughs> And just really an amazing ball player. You know, it's a shame he doesn't have a lot of supporting cast to play with. Well, again, as we've alluded to, he's going to be an excellent NBA Well, guess coach. what? He missed one. Well, and you, Greg Miller with a strong board. That's two in a row for him to miss. Yeah. Let's keep talking about it. Miller on the outside. Emmanuel Cross wants the shot. He got it. Emmanuel is hot. You're exactly right. Now, he wanted that shot. He felt that all the way. Went up strong and, and really did a nice job following through. Cardinals showing OU why they are the defending MAC champions. And as long as the Cardinals win, there's nothing Kent State can do to claim the regular season championship. Craig on the outside being guarded. Now I take the back. Whitaker very well by Cross. There's Whitaker on the outside. Boom. Uh, he was due. Whitaker with a big shot. 59-42. Oh, you're, with getting, the three. you're getting down with eight to go in the game, Al. They need to make a run if they're going to make one. Uh, Ball State can't help them that way. Mike Spicer throws it away. Too high for anybody to get. Greg Miller stretched his 6-8 frame up, but there wasn't any way to get it there. Jamerson, he'll take it. He'll drive. It's knocked out of bounds. No, they call foul. Eight minutes remaining in the ball game, 59-42. That makes that a 17-point game. It was 20 a moment ago. And Jamerson will go to the free throw line with another one and bonus. And he just missed the first of the one and bonus a moment ago. Well, he's had two in a row. We can't uh, imagine he missed three. And you're right. <laughs> he can't. He must good have, odds. <laughs> he paid attention. Jamerson got the first. And Jamerson and the Cardinals want timeout. Actually, the Cardinals called the timeout. As Coach Hunsaker wants to check things out. Let's Here's check that last foul, Tom. Last foul. He just flat went around Emmanuel, and Emmanuel just really hacked him across the right arm. There was no question about that. Sometimes you're better off to let him go and hope that the defense rotates over. Ball State does an excellent job of that. But tonight, I think they're, they're afraid if Jamerson gets away, he can pull it up so quickly and bury that little 10-foot off-the-glass shot in there that you really got to go after him. You know, a good timeout called, I think, uh, by Dick Hunsaker. At the eight-minute mark, you don't want to see Ohio start picking back away. We have him down. We had him down by 20. We have him down by 16 now. You want to make sure that lead stays out there. Well, this is the time that they're going to have to make a run. I don't think OU, they're not that kind of a team that can come back on you that quickly. Even though that they have some of the three-point shooters out there, as you look at the arena as we're getting a good uh, pan of the arena there. They, the big thing with OU is you can't let them start it. Uh, it's going to take them a little time to do it. So Dick is, I'm sure, talking about that. Control the offense, work the ball, use the clock. The clock is the best person that they have right now on their team. And they've got to keep it running. Well, as we showed you, some of the beautiful convocation center here on the Ohio University campus. We'll have one of those in a couple of years. Well, the amazing thing to me, Al, is this uh, arena down here is almost 22 years old. And you wouldn't notice coming in. They built this in 1968, and it really was a, a shrine at that time, thinking back 22 years ago. Jamerson with a second of the one and bonus, and he got them both, and the Cardinals get the ball out of bounds, and quickly OU goes into a press. Oh and they call Greg Miller for traveling. Another unforced there. It's, uh, Miller coming. looks a little disconsolate. He's not sure what he did. Well, I'm not sure either what he did. And Dick Hunsaker just got a technical. Uh, questioning that, and I, I think he really just questioned it very uh, mild mentally. I thought, just asking the question. Roger may, Paramore did not hesitate to make that uh, call. It, it may have been the, the kind of question that Dick asked. Uh, well, seemed, right away, we are at a 15-point game. Now, and it could be... A uh, two free throws will be shot and probably hit, and they'll get the ball out of bounds, and boy, is this a big turnaround. Well, you know, sometimes uh, officials call a technical early on Jamerson, and 
And, and here's what happened. Let's see if Greg did travel. He picks it up. Well, that's real questionable there because he was, if he's catching the ball, he's establishing a pivot foot, and that's a very questionable call. I don't know why you'd make that kind of call. Well, the call does go, and quickly, OU has whacked away on the lead, and they could really narrow this game down. Hoopner on nice the drive, move. got the drive and the foul. Well, and immediately, OU, Cardinals had him down by 20, and it is now only an 11 point game. That's a nine to nothing run. Well, that uh, Hoopner just flat, Hoopner flat out beats, as you'll see on a replay, just flat out beats. Greg's go, Greg Miller goes out and jumps at him, totally off balance, and Hoopner made an easy move to the bucket. I mean, you can't run out at an at offensive player like that. You've got to go out under control with your feet spread and ready to move back. Hoopner with the free throw, doesn't get it. Rebound, Miller strong. Greg Miller, a good jumping forward senior from Yorktown, Indiana. Well, Ball State needs to really control the ball here, take some time off the clock, get a good shot, get two or three out of this possession. Cardinals need to build back up the lead. It was 20 a moment ago. OU's in that matchup zone again, and you can see as they cut through, they basically guard an area, have a man of responsibility within a certain area. Chandler ball, Thompson looks inside. The, the open spots here have been basically reversing the ball back to the guard side. Nine on the shot clock. Emmanuel traveled. Cross travels. Well, again, got in a hurry, trying to create. Sometimes trying to create some things one-on-one -on -one gets you in trouble. Cardinals turn it over again. There I is cannot, no hurry. No. I cannot emphasize enough. Just two minutes ago, it was a 20-point lead. In two minutes, OU has cut it to 11. 59-48. Jamerson can't buy it. Rebound, Curtis Kidd. Boy, Chandler Thompson was out on the fast break, and they didn't see him. Defense! Mike Defense! Spicer with the ball in his hands. Defense! Kidd on the outside. Well, they've, got to, they've got to get some good ball movement here. They're standing around a little bit against this matchup zone, and they need to just get some good ball movement. Defense! They were really uh, finding the open spot in the first half against this and really kind of eating it alive with a, a nice two, three-point shot out there from about 18 to 20 feet. 6.25 remaining in the ball game. Cardinals just satisfied to take a little air out of it, run a little clock, look for the shot. They find Miller. He'll try three. That's a set play they run as they run Greg on the baseline and pop him out on a three-point shot. Nice job. Well, they've got Emmanuel Cross, Greg Miller, and Chandler Thompson, the second leading three-point man on the team in there. Almost a steal, but an easy one well, for Jamerson. Curtis made the gamble and lost. Kid almost got the tip. They'll throw a little 2-2-1 two, two, zone press at you here. And the Cardinals good. break it easily. They do a nice job getting the ball down the floor. Chandler takes it back to Mike Spicer, who will dribble the perimeter and find Greg Miller. 62-50, to 50, Cardinals lead by 12, 5-39 to go in the ballgame. Again, if they want to stick back in this zone, I'm sure Dick Hunsaker says, well, we'll run a little time off that clock because, again, that's their enemy. Chandler Thompson. Oh, nice, what a tough shot. Nice, nice flash. Pass. Nice flash. Nice recognition. Nice entry pass. 22 points for Chandler Thompson. What a game he is having. Career high. Whitaker on the outside. Jamerson being guarded by Cross. Oh, and nice tipped by job. Thompson. Nice Here job. we go. Watch it. Over the back and a stuff by Chandler. Good defense by the Cardinals and the big stuff by Chandler. Give him a 9.9 .9 out of 10. 16 points. It was 11. That's a five unanswered points. Hoopner looks inside. Back to Whitaker. Whitaker off to Hoopner. To Jamerson. Jamerson having a rugged second half. Nice double up. They're doubling up on Jamerson a lot. Makes him get rid of the ball. Whitaker on the outside. Oh, that's a Jarred charge. by Thompson. They call Thompson for the block. Whitaker will go to the free throw line with a one and bonus. And Chandler's just having a championship night. Well, he's playing under control, Al. And I think the big thing the coach has been concerned with Chandler on the road is that he doesn't play under control. He tries to create, try to make some things happen. You see on a replay here, very close call here. Chandler does a pretty good job. He's pretty well set there. He was leaning maybe just a little bit. On the lean, you don't get the call. Dennis Whitaker at the free throw line with a one and bonus. Misses the first and rebound. Emmanuel Cross came sweeping across and got the board. 4.30 to go, and the Cardinals right now in control by 16, 66-50. 
Well, they built that lead back up again, taking time off the clock. Now it looks like uh, OU's going back to a straight man-to-man -man now. Good move on OU's part as they cannot allow the Cardinals to continue to run it. They came down and Tom in three straight possessions got baskets out of it. Cross looks inside. Back to Spicer. Got Spicer. We've got a foul on the inside. What have we got on Leibold, I believe? No, yeah. we've got a time. I, I don't know. Just time. Uh, looked like uh, they thought maybe something in the eye. Yeah. So the Cardinals will get the ball back. 11 seconds. 11 on the shot clock. they got plenty of time. Chandler Thompson has the ball. He'll take the shot. It's got a no good rebound and a foul. Give it to Curtis Kidd. He's got a push. Kidd had position, but they say that Whitaker was in his way, and he shoved him off. And so Kidd gets the foul. Whitaker will go to the free throw line. 3.52 remaining in the ball game. 66 Cardinals. 50 for Ohio U. On the year, Ohio is 12 and 13 overall. They are 5 and 9 in the conference. Win or lose, they're going to stay in the eighth position. Whitaker off the front of the rim. Oh, Lebold got oh. the rebound over Kidd. Yeah, they just flat out didn't block him off the lane that time. They got another foul on Curtis. That's two in a row on Curtis. I don't, what's he got now? On? That gives him four. All in the second half. Well, Lebold, who did not play, I take that back. Hoopner, who did not play in the first half, has shown the spark that he showed in Muncie here in the second half. He likes to play against the Cardinals, obviously. He got the first one. Hoopner's a freshman from Mansfield, Ohio. On the year, shooting 63% from the free throw line. Ohio, not bad from the free throw line tonight. Second one is also good, and that's keeping them relatively close. It is 66 to 52. It's a 14 point Cardinal lead with 3.48 to go. Cardinals break the press. Emmanuel cross to Mike Spicer, and Spicer will put it under control and set up the offense. And Ohio still in their man-to-man. -man. Thompson with 22 on the night. A lot of rebounds. Finds Cross. Back Maybe. outside to Spicer. OU trying to do a lot of doubling whatatever they can right now to try to create some problems. That's Miller! A, that's an oh! That's NBA an NBA time. NBA three. That's Greg a, Miller on the outside, and he has got his three-point shooting eye tonight. That's three of them. Boy, he was out there. 23-point. <laughs> Whitaker, no good. Rebound, Kid. Foul got on the inside. Push. Another on another Kid. Push. That's and five. that is five Don't on Curtis. Curtis. Don't get a technical, Curtis. Don't get a technical. Timeout for the Cardinals as Kid went over and called timeout, and that'll be the all for Kid. And Kidd thought the push was the other way, Tom. Well, again, there's a lot of... It's really getting rough inside and has been all night long. And I think Curtis is getting bumped around a little bit. And he's bumping around. It's always the second guy that gets caught. And I think he did that time. Well, this is the Cardinals game to lose. Uh, and uh, they are not going to do that. There's only three minutes remaining. It is 69 Ball State, 52 OU. As you can see the score on the screen, that is a 17-point margin. Cardinals playing good basketball. Cardinals what? playing the kind of basketball, Tom, they need to play to go into the tournament and be the championship team they were last year. Well, I think you're right, Al. They really, they've been on a roll. They played two excellent basketball games, one on the road at Miami and one at Holden against Central. They got their act back together after that uh, Toledo debacle that, that uh, happened over Toledo. And I think they need this particular game and the game Saturday against Central Michigan to stay on that high, emotionally high. I think they've got their act together. And they're in control of this game right now. They're doing an excellent job tonight, I think, as much as I've seen them all year long from the offensive standpoint. That is the biggest flag I have <laughs> seen on a basketball floor, and I, my vote for the strongest man in the gym is that cheerleader right there. He seems to carry that awfully easy. Oh, huh? man, I'll tell you, that is tough with the, as he moves around with the wind, with the breeze whistling through that thing, that is tough. I don't want to arm wrestle that young man. But again, well, uh, they've got they've got things going emotionally. They're playing very well offensively. I think they're playing with some confidence on the offensive end right now, and that's the difference that we we've seen in the last few ball games and what we used to see early in the year, where there's a lot of inconsistency on the offensive side. Jamerson was at the free throw line trying to get the free throws, but Hoopner will try them. Now he's not a bad free throw shooter. He's not tonight. He is three for three so far, and Hoopner calmly bags it. 
Referees were not going to fall for the Jamerson at the free throw line trick, and Hoopner gets the first. Second one is up, and it's off the rim, and it's tipped uh, oh. out. Just really right got into out Whitaker's hands. Wisely got out, hustled on the lane. Almost a steal. Hoopner on the outside will find Craig on the corner. No good. Rebound inside. I said Curtis Kidd fouled out. We were wrong. No, I guess he only Thought had, he had fouled out, too. They had four fouls on Kidd earlier. Need to protect the ball and take care of the ball now. They're going to come out and try to trap. 69-52-53. Cardinals in the lead. Good job. Get it to the trap, man. Greg Miller in the corner. Boy, is he nice hitting. Spread. Nice spread. Nice backdoor, kind of a backdoor cut. Nice angle cut by Emmanuel. You know, Cross gets the easy two, and it's 71-53, and the bench is celebrating. Well, that's kind of the four corners they play. They're kind of delay spread. Game. Jamerson on the shot. He got it. Man. He's been kind of quiet for a while. He has been very quiet. He's 23 on the night. And that's as the quietest 23 I've seen. Yeah. I would have said it was less than that. Spicer has the ball, and he's fouled by Whitaker. Spice will go to the free throw line. He'll have a one and bonus. Well, I think we're in a free throw game right now. The only way OU can get back in this game is try to keep the clock from running. And the only way you do that is to, to foul at this point. Ball State has to hit the free throws. They're home free. Well, Mike Spicer, not a lot of opportunities at the free throw line for the year. Is shot just 20 times. He's shooting 56%. He needs more practice. No practice needed on that one. Nothing but cord. 72-55. The student section mercifully has been quiet tonight. Well, they really have. Even Dan. Even Dan, the big man behind us. Dan, the man, the big man. Next one is no good. Spice off the back of the iron. Yes, Dan, the fan, is behind us. And Dan, I would say, is easily pushes 300 pounds. <laughs> I do not want to get him angry. Whitaker on the shot. Slightly blocked, and Chandler with the rebound. There you go. Spicer to Greg Miller on the stuff. Over his back, and he got 180. it. 180. I'll give him a 9-9 on that We'll one. give him a 9-9 <laughs> and a good up move. Spice on the field in an easy two for Miller. And Miller has been the a nice, nice player tonight. Jamerson. Flips it up, doesn't get it. Foul on Miller. 136 to go in the ball game. And 74-55. The Cardinals' lead is 19. 19 for the Cardinals. The foul was on Chandler Thompson, they say. And that is five on Chandler Thompson. I thought Greg Miller got the foul. So the official I. said it was on Chandler Thompson. Trying to lose the uh, game tonight with 24 points. What a just a superior game, especially well, just, on the road, because that's what he's you know, had a little trouble with, but he certainly had no trouble tonight. That's a career high for Chandler, 24 points. And I don't know how many rebounds he wound up with, but he had to be awfully close to the double figures. Well, yeah. the student section behind us is yelling goodbye. <laughs> but they're, going to, they're going to enjoy watching him <laughs> yeah. in the years. They've they got, they got two more years to watch him. John Parrish will come into the ball game for Chandler. He sits down, 20. Here's a replay on that last... Uh, drive in there by Jamerson. Oh, no, this is Greg. This is Greg's 9.9 .9 stuff. Nice job. Nice job, That's camera pretty. crew. We have brought our entire crew <laughs> of 11 persons, men and women, from Channel 49 with us. And boy, thanks a bunch, gang, for an amazing job. This is the best crew in basketball. Well, all year long, they've done an outstanding job, Alan. Made our job easy. Jamerson got the first one. 74-56. That matches Chandler Thompson's 24 points. So Jamerson will leave the ball game, I predict, is uh, no, he doesn't get it. I was going to say high scorer right there. Good. Not yet. Foul on Jamerson. And Greg Miller will go to the free throw line, and that's not a guy you want there either. Greg's had a super second half as he's scored 11 points the second half, giving him a total of 13 so far. And three of those were three-pointers. And he really hasn't played that many minutes. No, he hasn't, no. He, and to come in off the bench, like you said earlier, Tom, and just right away pop that, that three-pointer three. and then two more in a row after that. Well, Greg had 19 against uh, OU and Muncie. It was high point man. You know, Dick Hunsaker has always talked about the character of these kids, and I, I think uh, Leonard Drake put it in perspective the other day when he said, you know, it's been easy for these kids to be jealous of one another. Uh, a lot of seniors on this team, a lot of them not playing as much time as they thought, but they held together, stuck together, and backed one another. That really is a, a mark of a good character of the team. Well, Miller missed the second free throw, and Miller is a good free throw shooter, shooting 82%. The second one just would not fall. It's 19 points with a minute 27 to go. The only thing to be determined is the final margin of victory. 
Almost a block. Boy, Curtis went up, but Whitaker did a nice job of staying with it. Mike Spicer will bring it down, find Sean Parrish on the drive. He'll take it right back outside to Greg Miller, and they'll double up again. Trying to find a way to shut the Cardinals down. Parrish looks cross court. He'll find Kidd. Kidd looks for an outlet. Cardinals work the perimeter as OU is out trying to find a way to shut it down. 53 seconds remaining. Uh, I think they've just kind of given the game. They're not, there's no need to foul at this point, uh, being down as far as you are. 15 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Cardinals will work it to 10. Spicer on the drive. He'll take it back outside to Emmanuel, down to 8. There's Miller to Sean Parrish, 5-4. Parrish will shoot. Nobody there. Kid gets the ball. Shot what do we got? Off. Shot clock is off. Cardinals have it. 26 seconds remaining. Foul. Hoopner with the foul on Miller. He'll have a chance for two more. 75, Ball State, 58 OU. You know, a young man who didn't play very much the second half is uh, Paris McCurdy. Paris McCurdy. He, he had some foul trouble there and didn't play a whole lot. He got his nose bloody. Got yeah, his nose bloody and he hadn't returned. And, uh, you know, again, kids did a nice job without Paris' stability. But he has there. been the inspiration on the bench in every play. He's been in there exactly. uh, jumping up, giving them all the inspiration and encouragement. An individual told me today that Dunkel, the Dunkel rating index, had predicted OU would beat Ball State by about five or six points. Oh, you're kidding. That was the word that was given to me today. I want an investigation immediately. Well, I can't believe Dunkel, Dunkel ratings would do that because they have a rating system and uh, OU is nowhere near Ball State, even with a four-point home advantage. Emmanuel Cross goes out. David Barber comes in. And there's Jamerson. Jamerson goes out and gets a nice ovation. David Jamerson, his last home game. Well, well-deserved standing ovation for Dave Jimerson. He has been an excellent Mac player. And, uh, again, it's nice to see him go, but, again, he's had an excellent career. Greg Miller with the first of a one and bonus. He got it. Also in the ballgame, Rodney Haynes from Newcastle, Indiana. And David Barber from Daleville. Miller gets two. What an excellent game Miller has played. Rebounding. Scoring has done a nice job on the defensive side. 77 58, 19 points. Mike Genta on the defense. Good shot by Gill. 13 seconds remains. Barber with the ball in his hands gives it back to Sean Parrish. He gives it back to Greg Miller. He'll dribble down. Nobody contesting the dribble. We're down to three, two, one, and that's the ball game, and the Cardinals win it. And they win it by one point more than they did in Muncie. The final score, 77 Cardinals, 60 for OU. I think a lot of things happened in this game, Al. Number, th number one, and probably most important, is Ball State still on that good emotional, good play offensively, still with their consistent defense and rebounding. They're really playing well right now as a team, as a unit, playing together. I think this is the best I've seen their offensive team work together. They move the ball well. They're looking for the good shots. It just seems like right now they've got everything in sync with one more game before the MAC tourney. I think they're really putting themselves in a great position here. They're definitely going to go in tonight with this seed and into the tourney with the number one seed now. That's guaranteed regardless of what happens Saturday. So it's just been an outstanding roll they're on right now down to the end of the year. Well, we haven't heard from Kent State. We can only hope that maybe they've lost, but win or lose, we won tonight, and that's all that counts. The final score, Cardinal 77, OU 60. You're watching Cardinal Basketball on WIPB. This is Cardinal Recap, a review of tonight's Ball State Ohio basketball game. Cardinals win a big win. It's 77 Ball State and 60 for OU on the OU campus. It's been a beautiful night for Cardinal fans. Tom and Orn standing by with our halftime wrap-up. Gentlemen. Thanks, Al. Great game tonight, Orn. I'll tell you what, the Cardinals got it together, and they were on roll right now. And, and I'm sure the kids coming off the bench tonight, that was good to see also. Greg Miller coming in, doing an excellent job, and Emmanuel coming in and playing well in the floor game. Scotty Nichols starting and doing a good job on the floor. I just thought, again, it's back to a total team effort. Everybody is taking part. 
And as you alluded to near the end of the game, even Paris McCurdy, he was out with a kind of a bum nose there. He was up there leading the, the, the yells down the line there. And the kids are really behind each other and playing very well right now. You know, everyone contributed. Roman Mueller comes in and blocks two or three different shots. That's what Roman does extremely well, and it really alters their, their offense a great deal. Mike Spicer, I thought, came in and ran the team extremely well the second half. Did a great job defensing on Whitaker. Just did a nice floor general's job, Mike Spicer did. But really, the whole team played extremely well. Well, and you know, what, And what can you say about Greg Miller's performance? 14 points the second half. And I don't know what his point per uh, minute average was, Orm, but it was an excellent job. The big thing I think tonight is that they're playing so well consistently on the offensive end. You know, that's one, one of the big problems that we've concerned ourselves with all year long. They've just not had any consistency there. Tonight it looked like they really were playing well together, looking for that open man. They were dumping the ball in, dumping it back out. More movement, a lot of picks, a lot of curl moves off what we see in practice day in and day out. They really are starting to be able to put it on the game floor. You know, you never like to... Con we compare a lot with last year's team. You really hate to do that because this is a different team. But tonight I felt like because, you know, one night it was Curtis Kidd last Saturday. Tonight it's Chandler Thompson. And that's the way the team was last year. We never had to rely upon one player to come in and play offensively for us. We had three players in double figures again tonight. So that kind of balanced scoring and uh, particularly play from Chandler Thompson on the road Really looks, really looks good for us going into next week. Okay, Orrin, let's look at the stats tonight. I know as you were talking about Chandler Thompson, he had an outstanding game. He did have an outstanding game. He finished with 24 points and a terrific well game both halves, but 24 points total. Uh, Curtis Kidd with 10 points. As I said, Greg Miller finished with 16 points, 14 of those in the second half. Uh, Emmanuel Cross, 9 points, 6 of those coming in the, the second half. Billy Butts with 7 points, all those in the first half. Sean Parrish with three points and Roman Mueller with three points. Uh, Parrish McCurley only got four points, but as I said, he was, he's always an inspiration whether he's in the game or out of the game. He, for Ohio University, they're a terrific player, and Dave Jamerson finished with 24 points. And uh, we really, hats off to Dave Jamerson. I've enjoyed watching him play over the years. I can't say that I'm going to miss him, although I really am going to miss his terrific play. Exactly. And Dennis Whitaker really had a terrific game tonight. He wanted to show him as going out as a senior that he also, not only is he an assist man, but a score, 16 points. I thought he played a terrific game also. And uh, Jerry Lebo, you know, the player that also plays football, had a total of nine points and played a terrific game, a hard-fought game for Jerry Lebo. Okay, Horn, a great game tonight again for Ball State, the second back-to-back uh, 20-game -back winning season. And, and uh, again, Dick Hunsaker, one of the youngest coaches to win 20 games uh, the first season. Let's go back to Al Rent for the wrap up. Thanks very much, gentlemen, and a great game for the Cardinals and a big victory. Our next telecast will not be Ball State basketball, but rather the Muncie sectional finals, and that'll be Saturday night from uh, the Muncie Fieldhouse. 7 o'clock, Tom Simpson or an Olinger will be down there with pregame, and they'll tip it off around 7.30, and we hope you'll join us on Channel 49. That'll be the Muncie sectional finals Saturday evening. 7 o'clock will be the pregame. Well, the Cardinals' record... Goes to 20 and 6 back to back. 20 victory seasons, 20 plus victory seasons. Final game is Saturday afternoon. 12.30 will be the tip off at University Gym. We'd like to see you there. They are 12 and 3 overall in the MAC, and they lead by one game. They'll have the final game Saturday. For all of us here at Channel 49 and Ball State Basketball, for Tom Dobbs and Owen Olinger, I'm Al Renz. Thanks for being with us. Good night.